Hi, my name is Warren Rushi and I am the SDSU Extension Beef Feedlot Management Associate and we're going to talk about bunk management as it relates to feeding cattle. When it comes to growing and finishing cattle, we tend to focus a lot of our efforts on the scientific aspects in terms of diet formulations, ingredient choices, and we spend a lot of time thinking about establishing what diets those cattle are going to be on. But in truth, feeding cattle successfully is as almost as much art as it is science, especially when it comes to how much feed are we delivering at a time and at what time are we doing that to make sure that we're not over or under feeding cattle. Either over or under feeding cattle costs us money. If we underfeed, we're giving up performance and we might impair cattle's ability to grade. If we overfeed, we're very likely causing acidosis, causing cattle to go off feed, which leads to poor performance, poor feed efficiency, and if we're not careful, we may even see increased death loss because of things like bloat and digestive upsets. So most commercial cattle feeders use something called a slick bunk feeding strategy where the objective is we want to match feed deliveries as close as possible to what the cattle's actual intake will be. Uh, research done here at SDSU has shown that uh, if we comparing a slick bunk strategy to one where, where we feed the cattle ad lib or just keep the bunks full, the cattle on the slick bunk strategy gained the same but used less feed to do that. And in fact, the average daily gains within those two groups was, were more consistent in the slick bunk strategy cattle, indicating that some of the cattle that were fed ad lib probably had some subacute acidosis going on. So what we need to do, what we need to have uh, if we're going to do a, a, a feed bunk management pro program is we need to have some kind of record of what the cattle have been getting over the last several days or over the course of the whole feeding period and then some way to measure or monitor what the cattle are doing from an intake and how much feed they're actually consuming. Dr. Robbie Pritchard at uh, South Dakota State University had developed a feed bunk scoring system as a way to communicate and measure just what was left in, ter in the feed bunk. Uh, the, the scoring system goes from a zero to a four, with a zero indicating no feed left at all, or a slick bunk. A score of a half would be just a few scattered kernels in the bottom. A one would indicate a thin layer of feed in the bottom of the feed bunk, perhaps one corn kernel thick across the whole bunk. A score of a two would indicate something around 25 to 50 percent of the feed left. A score of a three would be something more than half, but you could tell that the cattle had consumed some of the feed because the crown was thoroughly disturbed. And then a, finally a score of a four would be virtual, mean that virtually none of the feed had been eaten at all. The crown was still intact, or at least mostly so. That would indicate a, you know, a, an instance where the cattle simply didn't eat that day. And most, most of the time our goal then is going to be to manage that feed bunk and those feed deliveries so that we're nearly always at a zero, or at least a zero at some point during the day, with an occasional maybe three out of ten days where we end up with a score of about a half. That indicates that we're awfully close to what those cattle will do in terms of maximizing feed intake, but we're not pushing them so hard that they're over consuming. There's some, so if we've got those two pieces of information, if we know what they've done in the past in terms of feed deliveries, and then we've got a record of what their behavior has been, now we can start thinking about, well, how much feed do we give those today? And so there's some rules of thumb that have uh, been developed through both research and then practical experience in feedlots that uh, help us make some of those decisions. Uh, the first of those is we want to be reading bunks at the same time and feeding cattle at the, as close to the same time every day as possible. When that time is could certainly vary from one feedlot to another depending on weather conditions, workload, etc. But the key is to be consistent from one day to the next. We also don't want to increase feed deliveries more often than every three to five days. And the reason is we don't want to overload the system with more starch and what the rumen microbes can handle. We also want to limit feed increases to no more than about three-fourths of a pound of dry matter per day. Again, it's that way the, the rumen microbes have a chance to adapt and we're not getting out too far ahead of the cattle and causing feed intakes to crash later on because of acidosis. Finally, we also want to pay attention to what the cattle be, cattle's behavior. You know, if a pen of, pen of cattle are coming up very aggressively to the feed bunk when it's feeding time, that's an indication that they're ready for another increase as opposed to a group of cattle that um, 
Only a few of them are slowly starting to make their way up to the bunk. They appear to be very satisfied. That may be an indication that those cattle are, are pretty well on track for, from an intake standpoint and maybe aren't as ready to get increased. We also need to, th as we're thinking about how often and, and what to do in terms of feed increases, we need to think about too where those cattle are in terms of their, in the feeding period. For instance, uh, if we were feeding a set of backgrounded or um, great you know, yearling cattle, yearling heifers for instance, we might think expect that uh, maybe they will top out and say, let's say somewhere between 30 to 35 pounds as fed based on prior experience, history on that, cattle, that kind of cattle, etc. If our records show that we're very close to that and, and the bunks are slick and have been for a couple days, perhaps then that set of cattle we might think about they're pretty close to their maximum intake and we need to be very cautious and careful about increasing those again. Perhaps that's a group where we wait five days and maybe only bump them up a half a pound of dry matter rather than the full three quarters. On the other hand, if there's a group of cattle that have been on feed for about 30, 30 or 40 days and they've been increasing feed intakes nicely as we go and we still have room to to, to move up uh, to, before we reach that target we can be just a bit more aggressive uh, keeping in mind those guidelines that you know no more than about every three days but we can feel more confident those cattle are ready to get stepped up the whole area of feed bunk management and feed delivery also gets really closely inter intertwined with starting cattle generally speaking what we do is we'll uh, We'll start cattle on a lower energy diet than where they're going to end up and allow time for the rumen microbes and the animal itself to adapt to the higher energy finishing diet that they're going to spend most of the feeding period on. So what most feedlots will do is they'll start them out on uh, their first step diet uh, that's lower in energy and then over the course of, of a few weeks uh, they'll eventually step those cattle up uh, perhaps at once a week or so to a higher energy diet uh, before they reach their final final top diet. Uh, on calves, uh, that process usually gets extended out a little more. We want to allow those calves a little more time to get adapted in part because they're going to be on feed longer and also because they're less adapted to, to feed intake compared to a yearling. But well, most of the time what we'll do is we'll set up a, a target initial feed intake of a certain percentage of body weight, uh, perhaps 2% on a dry matter basis, and then we'll make those adjustments as we follow up those steps. One thing to keep in mind on starting cattle is we don't want to get too far ahead. But we want to make sure we've got some room to increase feed deliveries once we get them on the final diet. The last point on bunk management is uh, all of this sounds very easy on paper, uh, but when we start throwing changing weather conditions, this can complicate things a great deal. Uh, cattle tend to eat more when it's cold and eat a lot less under heat stress. So one of the things a good manager needs to do is we need to be monitoring uh, what's going on from a weather forecast standpoint and thinking about whether or not we need to adjust feed deliveries or if after the weather event has happened, make sure that any responses we're seeing from feed intake are before we increase feed, make sure it's because the cattle are truly able to handle it and not just because of changes in weather conditions.